Today I have something different for you. A yellow box. So this is one of the Chinese made tank kits. These were also presented in a few different models on the Ben Heck Show. I can link that video on the description. So I ordered one. This one's different from the ones that they used, but it's very similar. It's from the same people. Um, I can also link the manufacturer website in the description so you guys can find these if you want to do something interesting or just they're kind of like little RC cars you can do whatever you want a lot of people use the Arduino Arduino boards um, you can program them as basically the uh, controllers to run motors and things so they're perfect for these little things so and another idea of what I'd like to do with this so when you order one of these kits you get a box and somehow you get Someone sells yellow pecking tape. Weird. So they wrapped the hell out of this thing. I'm not sure why. Inside the box, you get this. Parts on the floor. Now if you notice, here's the box. Notice anything missing? Any documentation, Ben Hick also said this, and along with the other people in his show, you get zero documentation. The website that these are sold from does not have any information whatsoever. There's no instructions, so you better know what you're doing, or good at putting things together, or good with Legos, or anything. If you have a little wrench and a screwdriver and like to put things together, it's perfect, because there's no instructions, you're on your own. So, this is a tank, obviously, this tank track. Plastic wheels. There's the other one. There's all four of them. A couple bits of uh, aluminium. It's anodized blue. Looks very nice. Put those out of here. Bags. with your wheels little motors uh, these motors are kind of interesting it's a little tiny motor um, this motor in inches is about two inches long in millimeters we're looking at uh, let's see 53 three millimeters, just the housing itself. Overall length is going to be 85 millimeters. That's length of the shaft here. Uh, this little guy down here, it does tell you something useful. It's a nine volt motor. Runs at 188 RPM, plus or minus 10%, so 180 something. And then, instead of a model number or anything like that, they just have a date code. So you can see this was made uh, in 2016, 5, 10. So, the 10th day, the 5th month. So, there we go. Um, this guy here is a little gear reduction. So, you have this microscopic motor. Tiny little leads on the top. Gear reduction to a giant shaft. It looks like a brass bushing. So, there's no bearing on there. And it does have two screws, so... If you want to, you can probably dig in there and check out what's going on. You get two of these, and it's a tank. So, for obvious reasons, you have one for one track, one for the other. And they do mount somewhere in here, I'm assuming here. Um, you have the top slash bottom deck. So, it's kind of give you a scale. Here's my hands, and this is the overall size of the unit itself. Everything's going to fit inside there. And again, if we're going to measure things, why not? Uh, you're looking at about five and a quarter or 130 millimeters in length. Width is looking like about four, a little under four and three quarters or 120 millimeters. 
wide and this is the frame itself obviously the wheels and the tracks are going to hang over the edges of these so that'll make it a little bit bigger it's still not that big so you have your drive cogs uh, the way these are going to work is one will bolt to the other and drive the track so that's one and that's two and then these are just kind of wheels that flow and carry the rest of the track because you wouldn't have drive wheels on every single track that's not how tanks work they could but they don't and moving along we have a bag of miscellaneous there's a it came with an allen wrench in there Oops, stuff's already falling out and then these are just little tiny screws um, there's some machine screws nuts in there and little metal screws those look like they maybe have something to do with the plastic here those little wood screw looking things so you get this bag of screws and this bag of stuff and then last and least we have a thumbtack and there is a reason why this is in here I'll show you in a second the track itself um, on the Ben Heck show when they were doing their little robot war thing um, two of the three robots came with pre-assembled tracks that were proper length however one of the tanks came with something like a one and a half track however I have just one track so nothing's the right length for either so I checked in to try to find out how this works I didn't want to damage this to make two tracks out of it this thumbtack here has a purpose like I said what you do you should lay these along your tracks but I'll do it just to show you what's going on she's already coming apart where I pulled it earlier now on this track if you can see in here there are little holes right here where, well this is sticking out already, there's a little pin there. And one side is flush. If I flip this over. The other side isn't flush. If you can kind of see this here, there's a raised part. Now the raised part is where you're going to use this pin, not the other side. And I'll show you because this one's already coming out, sorry. You take your little thumbtack, and you're going to go into the longer hole versus the flush side. Otherwise, if you basically what happens if you push it through this side, this flush, it's got kind of a little um, knurled end. And if you push this through, it's going to stick at every point and also widen the holes all the way through the track, basically rendering that joint useless because you just widened it where the pin itself is not going to fit. So always go on this side it's got the little raised edge on it and you just take your pin that it came with and just shove it through obviously don't stab yourself push this through all the way till flush just so it starts sticking out and you see right here pulls out easy so this is what you're left with it's a little pin just a piece of metal and this side right here has kind of like a little twist, a little knurl, just basically this bites into the plastic so the pin doesn't back out. So this is what's holding the entire track together. That's why there's a thumbtack in there. If your kit didn't come with a thumbtack, obviously you can use one. I don't think it matters anything specific. So this, a pin, if you have a small, uh, like a brad nail or something like that, just you don't want to widen this hole that it's carried in for obvious reasons. The track will separate. So, pulling that out of there, we will now have two tracks. Voila. As far as assembly goes, out of all these parts here or here, there are no extra pins. So, the only thing I could assume is one of these is intentionally too long, or both of them are intentionally too long, so you should technically have another piece to take out of here so you will have two equal length tracks and enough pins to put this thing back together right now I have one nothing's measured like I said earlier so I will set this aside and definitely not lose this because I don't want to figure out what to stick in there so my main idea behind doing a video like this was the same fact that Ben Heck and his show 
was saying where there's no instructions and you just have to figure it out. Instead of that, I'm going to figure it out for you. So, follow along, we're going to start building this thing. So the first thing we're going to want to do is put together the drive wheels, these guys here. Now if you see, there's a lot of these kits use similar parts or even the same exact parts. So this you can apply to very different um, model numbers of kits or whatnot, you want to call them. So, we have our cogs here. Uh, there's obviously going to be two opposite ones going together because it's going to be an inside outside of the track. So there's two. Start with one of them. Now what we're going to need is these two here. So one per track. We need these that are basically motherboard standoffs for a computer, just extra tall. And then we will also need the locking nuts and then some of these little machine screws. Let's go ahead. So the first thing we're going to do is take this outer side and it's got the larger hole in the side instead of the smaller one here. So I'm going to actually do both of these just to get them done. Uh, we take these long standoffs and then we need a machine screw. So it doesn't matter what side, they're symmetrical in both. Um, basically just start threading these in. So now we have all the standoffs in loosely to the outside of the cog, and now we're going to take these drive cogs, or um, drive shafts if you want to call them that. Now these are going to go like so. They just go flush with the bottom here, so you can drop those in. And then we will take the outer side, drop it on top, which will leave you with a threaded s slot for the uh, gear to actually stick to it. And we need these long screws with the split washers. I'm just going to spin this in here. And one thing I'm checking for while I'm doing this is we will have two threaded openings down here. This will be what will lock you down onto the motor. So instead of using a grub screw, I'm sure they have a machine screw in here for that purpose. So this will connect to your motor, and you're going to use one of these two threaded holes to connect your motor to the drive wheel. So that's what I'm checking. So that's on there. You'll see where the motor is going to go. Now on the top here, we just use these regular nuts here, and these are fairly th fine thread. It looks pretty much like standard PC bolts, so if you had a computer screw kit of some sort, or just spare computer screws, a lot of these thread patterns are exactly what a normal desktop computer would use. So as you can see, I did have a problem. My camera's memory card started to freeze up and I lost a lot of video. So I'll try to do this with a microphone instead. Um, basically you guys missed me mounting the wheels and assembling most of the device. The wheels itself that I'm showing you now, they are assembled with a long bolt. It came with four long bolts and two nylock nuts and what you do is you tighten the bolt to the wheel leaving a one millimeter gap so the wheels can freely spin and then the second one ties it into the blue frame that I'm holding now the motor itself is using two machine screws none of these use split lock washers which are supplied 
and the cogs slide onto the motor shaft. Now there's two threaded holes in each of the cogs. Right now I'm actually attaching one to the motor and you just pick one that you left available and screw one of the supplied pan head machine screws in. You want to center these to where the track will go so I'm pulling it out and using my ruler to kind of align it visually so it will work straight on the track and not have any misalignment issues where a track would fall off or anything like that. So now that I have one of the cogs attached, uh, centered, and I tightened it down, I'm just going to start on the second one and repeat the process. You kind of slide it on. The motor itself on the drive shaft does have one flat surface, and that's what the screw is tightening down on. I mean, you can technically use two screws since we had extras, but it only requires one, and it just locks it down so it has something to rotate against. Now these motors, even though they're small, they are geared down. They've got a little transmission on them. So just to try to grab the motor and try to spin it by your hands, it's extremely difficult. And as soon as these are on here, you can move them physically. It's got a lot of force behind it. So these things are reduced quite a bit to kind of amplify the torque of such a small motor. And we lost a bunch again. Here's the final product. It's all together, top and bottoms, all assembled. Everything used, the pan head screws. Everything you see at the bottom of the screen is leftovers. I'm assuming it's for other accessories or other parts that the company may have available for these units. So there's quite a few screws left over that had no use. This is your assembled kit. There's different mounting points. Um, you can do other motors here. This is the same bolt pattern as the drive motors, just slightly smaller. I would assume using a servo and bolting it here. These may match up with servos. I don't have one handy to uh, check that out. And your Arduino would mount somewhere in here, or you can do a camera, or whatever you do, you can mount it all over the place. You have on top, space in the front for lights or cameras or anything you want. The bottom, I wouldn't really mount anything there because it is very close and this is your only ground clearance, this little space here. So this is kind of off limits, but you still do have these kind of slots. I'm assuming the reason why they gave you these extra screws is for whatever you're going to mount on here, such as an Arduino. Uh, we do have these screws with the taper bottom. Everything assembled here was with the pan heads, which we do have two extra. We have extra nuts. We have extra split washers, extra large split washers, and these little kind of sheet metal screws that were supplied. None of those were used in the assembly of this kit. There's no indication of where they should go. This is literally it. You go from here, be creative. This is yours, make it your own. So that's my assembly, kind of overview, what you get, how to put it together. Since there are no assembly guides on these tanks, you can probably apply this to most all other tanks of this style and go ahead build your own something of it put your own video up show us what you got